Hey everyone, my name is Brad. Welcome back to the vlog. Today I'd like to talk a little bit about coding and how it can help you maximize your income and why every doctor should know some basics on how to code. Now this video will not be about CPT codes or what you're submitting to insurance, but more about how to run a program so that you can maximize your own billing. Let's dig into what I'm talking about. The big question a lot of y'all may be wondering is, why are we even talking about coding? Passive income is wonderful, but you need to maximize the work that you're doing in order to get paid the maximum amount, all in a ethical, legal, and contractually bound way. For most physicians, you're gonna spend the majority of the day actually practicing medicine. And while you're there, have you ever sat back and thought, well, how much is X, Y, and Z making me money? How many times are X, Y, and Z things that I'm doing throughout the day? making me money. That's where I'm going to start with why it's important to know some basics of how to code in an effort to maximize the income and the work that you're doing just every day you're at work. You don't need to become a computer programmer, but what I would like is for you to learn how to use Microsoft Excel to your full advantage. Why Microsoft Excel? Because every billing platform will have the option to print out its data in Excel format. When we were looking at switching medical records, we didn't find a single medical record that couldn't print out all of its data in a Microsoft Excel format. Now where this can matter for you is because if you're paid based off of production or RVUs, you need to figure out which ones are actually getting attached to an RVU value and which ones may be paying you a lot more than others in order to do those procedures. For example, our billing platform, we have about 400 encounters a week and that Excel document every two weeks when we try to run payroll, is about 14,000 lines long. Even if you split that up per doctor, you're still going through 4,000 different lines of printable things that are in Microsoft Excel every two weeks. You can't do it. You have to have a way to automate this or simplify this. So I'll go through my methods on how I do it today. Hopefully it can help you maximize your own income and learn where you're making money and where you're submitting bills, but you're not getting paid for it. Okay, here on this Microsoft Excel form, you can see we have multiple different columns. Column A, we have the charge code, the total charges that we're submitting to insurance, patient payments, maybe their copay, or how much they're responsible for, insurance payments, total payments, and adjustments. Your data may not be broken down as nicely as this one, but I'm going to make a few points here. The first thing that I would like to talk about is adding the sum formula. How much money total have payments brought in? So to do this, you do equals SUM, and then you open your statement, and you see that it's telling us you want it wants a number or a list of numbers. So instead of typing all of these out, E2, E3, E4, simply hold control, highlight all of them that you want to sum up, and hit enter. So it'll sum up everything in this row between this data set and that data set. Okay, instead of the sum formula, what if we want to count exactly how many times that we built for this code? Well, we just use the count formula. Same thing, hold control, highlight all of them, push enter. Now, what if I want to know how many times did I actually get paid for this? You can use the count if, and with that, you highlight the same exact range that you want. But beyond that, it's asking for a criteria. So you have to separate by a column, and now we're on the criteria stage. This has to be within double quotation marks, and I want to know how many times we got paid greater than zero at all. Close the bracket, and then you can see that we've got paid four different times. So now, what if I want to know count if zero payment. Well, same thing. Equal count if highlight your rows and columns. Um, we want to know how many times it equals zero. So you can run data points and say, okay, I got paid four different times when I built this code out of 31 times that I built the code. And 27 times we had zero dollars in payments for this code. What a waste of time. Also helps my builders then isolate these four episodes where we did get paid and figure out why we got paid for those four. What I'm advocating for physicians learning how to code is one, getting the data from Excel. If you have a contract that is based on production or RVU based, you should have a clause somewhere in your contract that tells you and your employer what right to that data you have. Whatever data that you're privy to, if you haven't asked for it, why? That's literally your money, your income, and your billings. Forget the passive income for a minute. That's always wonderful. But if you're working all day long, you need to maximize income for you. Your license is your own business. 
you're producing income, you're producing a lot of revenue services, and you need to know where to go after to get more benefit out of your day. Even with my previous group, they gave me access to Excel and I would go through this and I would start counting how many times did this pay? How many times did that pay? The other beauty with Excel is that, remember that count if formula? You could always start searching for CPT codes. Instead of greater than zero, you could put in 99214. How many follow-ups did you see with a 99214? You could start counting those number of times. And in my example that I gave you, you could start finding things like, wow, even though we're billing for Q0091, 87% of the time it's paying nothing. Maybe we should either stop doing the procedure, we're not billing for it correctly, we should find why those payers that did pay, why did they pay, and dig more into the data because clearly we did a procedure, we should get paid for it, and if we're not, we need to either stop doing it or learn why we're not getting paid for it. This will also help identify potentially where your lowest payers are for certain procedures or codes. And it can also help identify where missed copays are. For example, remember my previous value where we talked about patient payments and insurance payments? You can start running data sets to say, how many times did we miss copays on those patient payments? And if your system doesn't have this automat automatically done for you, or you don't have admin privileges to do this, you could always ask for the data to see how good is the front staff doing? Are they, are they collecting my copays? Is my insurance payments coming through? Again, this is gonna highly depend on what your group is willing to give you in terms of data. You're working hard, you need to make sure that whatever you're billing for is getting paid for appropriately. You need to know how to data mine your own billing and accounts receivables to learn how to optimize your own practice. Even if you are employed and you're based on production, you still are basically a business within a business. You need to learn how to optimize that so that you can make the most money and then you can move on to passive investing beyond that. Now in terms of coding, I've actually been learning Python and how to code there. It's been pretty cool learning how to code in Python. Now my ultimate goal for Python is threefold. One, because I wanna automate things in my practice and I wanna figure out how to data mine my own population. When I say I want to data mine my own patients, basically if a patient hasn't been seen in 365 days or if a patient is very high risk, I want to find a way to automatically email them and say, hey, you haven't been seen in a certain amount of time. Please consider following up with us. That'll prevent many messages, many medication refill requests, all these issues that we run across, trying to automate it so that we don't run into those issues. The other goal that I have is because there's so much data that gets printed out in the medical records, it's not reasonable to parse through that data in just Excel format. Sometimes this data is absolutely massive and Python I think is the way that I'm trying to move forward in going through that data to figure it all out. The other reason I'm learning Python is because I have three brothers-in-law who are all computer programmers and on some level I'd like to be able to talk to them about some sort of computer programming because at Christmas when they start talking about their computer languages, I feel a little bit left out. I have no idea what they're talking about sometimes, but now that I've gotten into programming, I understand it a little bit more. I personally bought this class off of Udemy called 100 Days of Coding, the complete Python bootcamp for 2022. Day 20 and beyond is a lot of other things that I don't know that I will necessarily need, but right now I'm on day 25 and it has been wonderful to go through it. You can find it on sale for as low as $9.99, which is when I bought it for $9.99. Think about learning how to code and not only learning how to code, but think about you need access to your data because if you don't have access to your data as a physician, even if you're employed, you have no idea what's bringing in the most money, the least money, and where those low hanging fruits are to basically make more income without working harder. Think smart, not hard. See you guys next week. Have a good week ahead. Thanks for following and subscribing.